Multisensory Urban Search and Rescue Robotics Improving the Operator's Omnidirectional Perception Let us start by introducing a few concepts, such as multisensory feedback. In the multisensory feedback system, the user of an interactive system can now receive feedback from multiple senses, not only the vision. Data can be spatialized and perceived by the user from around him, not being limited to the area available on a computer screen. Moreover, because the user is now making use of other senses to perceive the data, he doesn't need to look at the data in order to perceive it. He is not limited to the directional nature of vision, but can now perceive data omnidirectionally, that is, coming from all directions. If well designed, presenting data and consonants to match physical feedback the user is accustomed to receiving from the real world, multisensory feedback can lead to more natural types of displays to the user. Let us now give an overview of urban search and rescue robotics. This work focuses on an area of teleoperated robotics called urban search and rescue, or USAR. The work in this area can be simplistically summarized as when there is a catastrophic event involving assets that need to be recovered, be that human lives or not, and there are locations that are inaccessible to humans due to either physical constraints or hazardous conditions, a team of experts remotely approach the location with a robot and attempt to find and recover as much of the assets currently lost as possible. As the use of robots grows, so does USAR. Robots have been used as tools to search for victims, but also to help resolve incidents in human hazardous or inaccessible locations. Most of the focus of USAR teams is still on locating human lives in either mines, building collapses or wilderness. Lately, however, as was the case of the Fukushima disaster in Japan, we have seen them used to also evaluate the overall safety of damaged power plants. So what is the state of the art in terms of user robot displays? Well, let's start from the robot or rover side. Currently, a user robot can have multiple types of sensors to capture a variety of types of data from the environment. The data is captured from all around the robot, not just from where it's looking at. The raw data captured by the sensors is then received and analyzed by one or more computers, which can be located within the robot itself or remotely in the operator computer. What is interesting about these systems, however, is when the data gets to the end user. Even though all the data is sensed omnidirectionally by the robot, when it gets to the final user interface, it is all displayed together on a visual-only display. Now let's evaluate the situation from the perspective of flow. There are seven pipes coming in, each with its own flow of data and only one coming out. Considering that all these pipes are the same diameter, it's easy to see that the flow coming out is going to behave differently than if we had the same pipe configuration as the one coming in. The data flow might burst extremely fast, and even if it does so, it may still not be able to keep up with the incoming flow. Now, if this was a water flow situation, the computer would have exploded by now. Fortunately, we are dealing only with data here. A solution to the problem would be increasing the diameter of the outcoming pipe. A way of achieving that, in reality, would be having a visual display with the larger screen area and resolution where more information could be displayed. This is almost as bad as having a rapid flow of data in a small display. Because of the directional nature of human vision, the user or operator will not be able to monitor all data flowing and keep up with the flow of information. The result is loss of information leading to user unawareness of the situation of the robot and the remote environment it is in. But what other options are available, apart from using a display that leverages only monosensory and directional visual perception? The research we present here takes an approach that has been successfully applied in other areas of computer science, but that has not yet been fully explored in HRI, specifically in USAR. The idea is to keep the multisensory and omnidirectional sensing side of the robot as is. On the user side, however, we recreate a similar multisensory and omnidirectional situation for the human perception. Obviously, we should not reproduce the remote situation to the operator with complete fidelity. Otherwise, using the robot interface will lead to the same hazardous or physically constrained situation with which, by using the robot, the operator was trying to avoid in the first place. The plan is to use a subset 
of the human senses to spread the flow of robot sense data. The motivation behind this approach is that using other senses to perceive data will lead to, first, a reduction in information clutter on the screen, second, an increase in the user perceptual bandwidth, since now he has not only the visual, but also other sensory channels to process information. Such an approach leads to higher flow without necessarily increasing the speed with which data should flow. What is also interesting about this approach is that human perception is no longer restricted to where the user is looking. The user can perceive specialized data coming from all directions. The interface design has shifted from a monosensory directional interface to one that leverages the potential of the omnidirectional multisensory human perception. This research is going to accomplish this by evaluating the impact of incrementally increasing the amount of multisensory feedback on a user robot interface. The study presented builds upon previous research results and experiments with oral, tactile, and smell feedback as redundant displays for data originally displayed only through visuals. Please notice that the focus of this research is not on input, but on output methods, that is, on feedback to the robot operator. There are still many unanswered questions in the area of multisensory interfaces and displays. For example, can they specifically help improve user robot interfaces? What are their downsides? How diverse can multisensory feedback become before cognitively overwhelming the user? Does redundantly displaying data to different senses help or hinder the user? Is multisensory interfaces usefulness limited to certain types of tasks? What are the effects in user cognition when data is displayed simultaneously through multiple senses? Last, what methodologies can be used to evaluate such kinds of interfaces? There are questions that are not easy to answer, but our research work rather ambitiously attempts to provide, if not an answer, at least a hint to what the answer to these questions should be. The goal of this study is to provide an initial evaluation for a few multisensory interfaces with different levels of complexity as an attempt to answer some of these questions, but ultimately to try to improve human perception, cognition, and performance during robot tasks. But using other senses in computer interfaces is not a new thing, is it? Let us give a brief overview of multisensory feedback. Our focus here will be in advanced and robot interfaces. Most robot teleoperation interfaces designed up to this day display all data visually. Nevertheless, there has been an evolution in their design over the course of the past couple of decades. The interface design for teleoperated robots can be roughly divided into three distinguishable eras. The mono-out prefusion era, where data is spread across the visual display in multiple windows that can potentially overlap. The mono-out fusion era, where data is presented in a single window, but in potentially multiple panels that generally overlap. The fusion consists in actually performing the overlap, but in an intuitive and non-obtrusive manner. They allow for all important or more frequently accessed information to be located around the user's center of attention. The mono-out, mono-in era. This is the latest development in user interface design. The idea is to fuse the input interactions with the visual display itself. The input is now also done closer to the user's visual point of focus and can therefore be handled or disambiguated more effectively and efficiently. Much as these robot interfaces have improved over time, little effort has been put into using more than one sense for either input or output. And this is the motivation of our work, to bring the user interfaces to the next era, the era of multi-out, multi-in data fusion. To achieve that, however, we need to start with small steps. The plan here is to use a fused visual interface as a control case based on the work of Nielsen and Goodrich and investigate what happens when it is enhanced with multisensory feedback. In terms of audio feedback, many other researchers claim that adding it has helped in search tasks and improved the realism and user situation awareness in virtual scenes. Situation awareness, or SA, simply means how aware the user is of the current state of the robot or system and its surrounding environment. Audio feedback has also been claimed to have helped reduce collision levels in navigation tasks. The audio feedback we are going to use in our study are metonymic and cartoonified audio sounds. Cartoonified 
means that they are exaggerated to make more explicit what the sound really means. This approach is commonly used in video games and movies. Metonymic means that, even though the sound may not be physically realistic, it is generally associated with the event that is occurring. An example of that would be an increase in cattle hissing being associated with an increase in temperature. For touch feedback, we are covering here research in vibrotactile feedback, which is the main area of focus of this research work. Again, there has been a lot of research in that area, and vibrotactile feedback has been associated with improved reaction and completion time, fast effectiveness, as well as claimed to be useful for providing directional cues, alerts, and 3D information. In terms of smell feedback, many types of devices have been created and tested. Three approaches are commonly used among researchers. An air cannon, where smoke rings are directly or indirectly shot at the user's nose. Fans with atomizers, where wind is constantly blown at the user. And transmission tubes, that fuse the smell nearby the user's nose in smaller amounts. Overall, current research has been directed towards creating the devices, but to our knowledge, smell feedback has never been compared to other types of feedback in the performance of a task. There are also aromatherapy studies that reframe the effect of different smells on the subject's mood and behavior. Some of these studies and results, however, are the cause of much contention among researchers. The research presented here is going to use a fan plus atomizer approach to display smell and attempts to evaluate the benefits in performance and assay of using such feedback in a user task. The independent variables were the type and level of multisensory feedback subjects were exposed to. Interface 1 was a visual-only interface, presenting all the RobotSense data on the computer screen. Interface 2 was built upon Interface 1 by adding audio feedback. Interface 3 was built upon Interface 2 by adding vibrotactile feedback. And Interface 4 was built upon Interface 3 by adding smell feedback. Details on the mapping of RoboTense data to the multisensory interface can be found in the paper. The dependent variables were too many to be briefly mentioned here, but included performance, cognitive load, workload, presence, and health-related variables. Because of the highly perceptual nature of the study, before participating in the study, subjects were asked questions about claustrophobia, colorblindness, hearing, or olfactory problems, and allergy to any smells or rosemary. Subjects were also tested for spatial aptitude at the end of the experiment. The task of the study was <clears throat> relatively very simple. Subjects had to remotely teleoperate a robot as fast as possible and without colliding with the environment, find as many red circles as possible in a debris field environment while simultaneously answering simple text color matching questions. And when done, they had to sketch a map of the entire location with the location of the circles found. Piece of cake. <coughs> the robot used was a custom-made four-wheel rover. It had an all-terrain chassis with four motors that allowed differential drive. Included in the robot was a pen tube camera, collision, collision proximity, and CO sensors. The CO sensor was not used, and CO levels were simulated using augmented reality markers. They were placed on the ceiling above the circles to be found, and would lead to an increase in the reported levels of carbon monoxide as the robot approached them. Here's a bottom view of the robot. Notice the tape and garden hose that were added to the wheels to reduce friction with the carpeted floor. And here's the interface as seen by subjects on a computer monitor. The panel would display video stream and rotate in the direction of the camera was pointing relative to the robot. Collision and collision proximity feedback was reported by a ring of dots on top of the robot avatar. A speedometer was placed behind the robot. The CO bar was placed to the right. A timer seated in the top right corner of the screen. Last, the strip test color matching text was located in the top center of the screen. Here's an overview of subsections of the area where the red circles were hidden and where only the robot was allowed to go. The operator controlled the robot remotely from a smaller room which was ventilated using two domestic fans to guarantee the dissipation of the rosemary smell dispersed by the smell device. We have seen a decrease in the median number of collisions with the addition of audio feedback in interface 2, 
even though no SSD was detected. This is probably due to the smaller population that was used per condition. This decrease matches the decrease obtained by other previous studies using simulated robots. A similar decrease was also detected for the number of collisions per minute. We have also detected a statistically significant improvement in the number of circles found for the interface with smell feedback when compared to the interfaces with visual only and visual and audio feedback. What is even more interesting is that the smell feedback interface also led users to assume a sniffing behavior during the search task as reported in detail in the paper. The most interesting result, however, was that interfaces enhanced with audio and with audio touch and smell feedback led to improvements in subjects' levels of global situation awareness as reflected by the quality of the map sketched at the end of the study. This could be an important indicator of the reduction of user workload due to the use of multisensory feedback. In summary, we have been able to show that a well-designed multisensory feedback interface can improve user performance not only in navigation but also in search. This was demonstrated through the performance of a simple search task using a remotely teleoperated robot. With this work, we hope to motivate the interface community to explore and leverage from the benefits that multisensory interfaces can bring to the end user. We appreciate your attention. Please contact us for details on the experiment.